Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about Kelvin's bridge. In the previous video, we have seen the Wheatstone's bridge, which is in balanced condition and unbalanced condition. In balanced condition, we have taken a formula R4 is equal to R2, R3 by R1. And in unbalanced condition, we cannot measure the unknown values. We can measure only the current flowing through the galvanometer. Remember this point in a balanced condition only we can measure the unknown components for any type of bridge whether it is an AC bridge or DC bridge we can measure the unknown component like resistance capacitance inductance and frequency these components can be measured only when the bridge is in balanced condition in unbalanced condition we can never find the unknown values because in unbalanced condition we are measuring the current flowing through the galvanometer that is no way useful to measure the unknown values now the difference between Wheatstone's bridge and Kelvin's bridge. What is the difference between Wheatstone's bridge and Kelvin's bridge? In the Wheatstone's bridge, the bridge is used to measure some moderate values like uh, kilo ohms. But whereas in the Kelvin's bridge, Kelvin bridge can be used to measure the resistor values which are having very, very lesser values. So that means even less than 1 ohm. Our resistance, if it is a 0 0.5 ohms, that can be measured by using Kelvin's bridge. So it is mostly used to measure the lead resistor value, lead resistor value or contact resistance value. Okay, so when it is necessary to measure the magnitude of lead or contact resistance, then we are going for this Kelvin's bridge and it is used to measure the resistance value which is very less than 1 ohm and it is just a modification of the Wheatstone's bridge. Okay. Now here there is a problem uh, which is which was not considered in the case of uh, Wheatstone's bridge. See this is the circuit diagram of uh, Kelvin's bridge. Circuit diagram of the Kelvin bridge. If this is the power supply. We are giving the DC supply E and R1, R2. These two are the resistors. R, Rx which is unknown resistor and R3 is the third arm resistor. Now. If the galvanometer other end is connected at this point B, what happens? At this point C, what happens? And at this point A, what happens? Suppose if the galvanometer end is connected at this point A, in the previous Wheatstone's bridge, there was no problem because we have not going for the measurements of low resistance value. Suppose if you are going for the low resistor value measurement, then the resistance from A to C, because every lead or every wire is having some internal resistance. The resistance from A to C will be added to this resistor Rx. Suppose if this galvanometer other end is connected to this point C, then the resistance from A to C has been added to the resistor R3. Okay. Suppose if the resistor is exactly, if the galvanometer other end is exactly connected to the center point B, then from the here to here there is a resistance that is RAB that is added to R3. And the resistance from here to here which is nothing but RBC that is added to Rx if it is exactly at the center like B. Okay. So here we have assumed a condition such a way that RCB and nothing but RBC by RAB is equal to R1 by R2. Okay. Everything is started only at this uh, junction that is nothing but RAB is equal RCB by RAB is equal to R1 by R2. Now, let us calculate how to calculate this unknown value. Consider bridge is in balanced condition. Okay, bridge is in balanced condition. Bridge is in balanced condition. So, what happens when bridge is in balanced condition? We know the formula R4 is equal to R2, R3 by R1. R4 is equal to R2, R3 by R1. See here. R4 is equal to, that means the resistance in this fourth arm is equal to multiplication of this one, R1 into this one, divided by this one. Okay. So, I am writing here. What is the arm in, the, what is the resistance in the fourth arm? Rx plus this resistance RBC will be added. Rx plus RBC is equal to multiplication of opposite resistors here R1 and R3. R1 
what is R3 here? R3 is not purely R3. R3 is added with some lead resistance. That is RAB. So, where it is? Uh, see, R3 plus RAB by the resistor R2. Okay. Take it as first equation. Now, our aim is to calculate the values of RAB and RBC. Once if we are able to calculate these two, then we can substitute that in this first equation. Then we will get the bridge balanced condition. Okay. Now, we know from this figure, we have taken the total resistance from A to C. That would be RAB plus RBC is equal to RY. This is first assumption. And second assumption is RCB or RBC by RAB is equal to R1 by R2 as per this notation. Okay. Now, add 1, add 1 on both sides. Add 1 on both sides. Then what happens? RBC by RAB plus 1 is equal to R1 by R2 plus 1. So, take LCM RBC plus RAB by RAB is equal to R1 plus R2 by R2. So, RBC plus RAB, what it is? It is nothing but Ry. It is nothing but Ry. So, Ry by RAB is equal to R1 plus R2 by R2. Therefore, we need RAB is equal to R2 Ry by R1 plus R2. So, this is the formula for RAB. This is the equation we have got for RAB. Now, substitute this RAB in RY. RY is equal to RAB plus RBC, then we will get RBC. So, we know RAB plus RBC is equal to RY. What is RAB? R2 RY by R1 plus R2 is this RAB equal to R2 plus RY, okay. Plus RBC is equal to RY. What we need? RBC. So, RBC is equal to RY minus R2 RY by R1 plus R2. So, take LCM R1 RY minus R2 RY minus R2 RY this is plus divided by R1 plus R2. So, this one this one cancelled. So, we are left with R1 RY divided by R1 plus R2. This is what RBC is. RBC. Okay. Now, substitute this RAB and RBC values in equation 1. So, from equation 1, from equation 1, what is equation 1? Rx plus RBC is equal to R1 by R2 into R3 plus RAB. Okay. This is the equation 1. Now, substitute the values Rx plus what is RBC? R1 Ry by R1 plus R2 that is equal to R1 by R2 into what is R3? R3 is R3 plus what is RAB? R2 Ry by R1 plus R2. Now, Keep the left hand side notation as it is R1 Ry by R1 plus R2 that is equal to multiply here R1 R3 by R2 
plus R1 R2 Ry by R2 into R1 plus Ry. So, R2 R2 cancel here. We are having R1 Ry R1 plus Ry. See R1 Ry this is R1 plus R2 sorry this is R1 plus R2 here R1 plus R2. So, R1 Ry R1 plus R2 R1 Ry R1 plus R2. So, we have the same term on both the sides. So, we can cancel this one and this one. Okay, so there is nothing here Rx is equal to R1 R2. So, what we are left in we are having now Rx is equal to R1 R3 by R2. I am writing here. So, finally we have got Therefore, the unknown resistor, unknown resistance Rx is equal to R1 R3 by R2, R1 R3 by R2, simply. That means what we can understand here, is there any effect of lead resistance? No. There is no influence of lead resistance in the measurement of unknown resistance Rx when we consider exactly at the center B. Suppose we have, if we have not considered exactly the galvanometer at the center, then there may be some definitely some lead resistance effect in, on the measurement of the resistance Rx. Okay normal this is nothing but normal original balance unbalanced equ balanced equation what we have got in the case of wheat strands bridge here also we have got the same of course resistor values are different like resistance values are different like r2 r3 by r1 there r2 r3 by r1 there here the resistor values are just interchanged okay but the formula is same okay so rx unknown resistance is equal to r1 r3 by rx okay so, when the galvanometer other end is connected exactly at the center of the resistors R3 and Rx, then there is no impact of the lead resistance on the measurement of Rx. We need to remember this line. If we do not connect at the center or if we move the galvanometer to any side, then definitely some lead resistance will be there and added on either of the resistors wherever we are connecting. Okay, then definitely this resistor unknown resistance value may lead. Okay, so that's why we are having the much more detailed concept like uh, Kelvin's double bridge that we will see in the next video. Okay, 